the rivers and waterways of Vietnam presented a new type of warfare to the United States military. These passageways would serve the Viet Cong avenues for transporting goods, arms, and troops. This was such a threat that multiple operations were mounted in order to prevent the movement of said resources. However, engagements with the enemy were fierce and proved that new weaponry was needed to level the field. The answer was the Zippo boat. Nicknamed after the iconic cigarette lighter and even as a backup way to ignite the napalm. In this video, we will briefly dive into the history of the Zippo boat and how it came about. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, it helps out greatly. Originally, the Navy was armed with a wide array of vessels to patrol the waters, most of them being surplus landing craft from the Second World War, as they would perform superbly in shallow waters. However, we will be focusing on one in particular, the Monitor. It was a heavily modified landing craft mechanized 6, or LCM-6. The Monitor was 60.5 feet long, with a 17.5 foot beam. It could achieve a top speed of 8 knots, or 9.2 miles per hour, with its twin, Gray Marine 225 horsepower diesel engines. However, armor and weapons reduced the effective speed to 47 knots. Its original armaments were the main gun of one 40mm cannon up front, one 81mm mortar amidships, one 20mm cannon, and two 50 caliber machine guns. These monitors packed a heavy, hard hitting load. The 81mm mortar could hit up to 5,000 yards away as well as the main 40mm gun, was vastly capable of providing accurate and devastating firepower against early enemy fortifications. Now the problem with these came when the Viet Cong increased the strength of their fortifications. So much so that the 40mm cannon would not be able to penetrate them, as well as the 81mm mortar's low velocity failed to penetrate these targets as well. So the Navy turned to napalm for their solution as higher-ups hoped that napalm would greatly deter future enemy efforts to ambush their forces as well as wipe out the enemy fortifications, as the military has already seen great success using the effects of napalm from the air as well as the ground. Originally, this was done with essentially placing a M132A1 armored flamethrower on the deck of a riverine boat. This did work and would effectively reach all desired targets with a 32 second burn time. However, the additional weight of an entire armored vehicle on the deck of a boat was too much. For reference, the M132A1 weighed around 23,000 pounds. So, the Navy would mount the M10 TAC-8 flamethrowers on their monitors. This was the same flamethrower as utilized in the M132A1. Just taking the flamethrower itself allowed for great weight reduction as well as keeping the range and reliability of it. The M10 TAC-8 flamethrower had an effective range of 200 to 300 yards. This was achieved by utilizing compressed air carrying 1,350 gallons of napalm fuel. These flamethrowers could provide around 225 seconds of terrifying jets of fire. It was ignited by a gasoline lighter. Two of these M10 TAC-8 flamethrowers would be mounted on each monitor on the bow. Six of these newly upgraded monitors would be delivered in May of 1968. These Zippa boats would provide the firepower needed to meet the ever-changing demands of the conflict. It would often be seen clearing large areas of the riverbank, and the immense heat would be felt by everyone in the vicinity. Now the only remaining monitor in the world is the CCB TAC-18, it is a command and communications boat. It is on display at the Naval Amphibious Base Coronado in California. And with all that said, we're going to wrap up another video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, as well as any feedback you would like to provide as it greatly helps the channel and improve it for all of us as well as an article from the Mobile Riverine Force Association is linked below. It provides great first-hand accounts on what it was like on the Zippos, as well as the early stages of mounting the armored flamethrowers on the deck. With that said, I really do appreciate everyone subscribing and leaving comments and everything like that. Alright, with that said, have a good one, and I'll catch you in the next one.